Hey guys, welcome to episode 15. I wanted to do a just quick kind of medical overview about getting a puppy. Um, just because now that Aura is done with her series of immunization shots, we've really started to socialize her. But it was a little bit of a shock, you know, when I first got a puppy uh, and went to the veterinarian and they're like, hey, you, you, you want to socialize your dog, but you really can't start taking them out to public areas uh, until after their, their shots have been done. And so you know, it's a little bit of a learning process for us, and, and you'll find when you get your puppy, there's going to be a schedule set up from your veterinarian about what shots they need and when. Um, I cannot understate the importance of these shots, especially the parvo and distemper virus immunizations. Uh, parvo is a really pervasive disease. It can live in the soil for up to a year, um, it, especially in moist conditions, and depending on what region of the country you're in, it can be more prevalent than other. But parvo can be easily transmitted from a sick dog uh, in a dog park or even meeting them on the street, and it has an extremely high mortality rate. I think untreated in younger puppies, it's like 91%. Some breeds tend to get hit harder, like Rottweilers and I think Dobermans. Like, it's a very deadly disease. So. I would err on the side of caution with this. Our our vet was was very much like, hey, you know, limit the amount of walks, keep your puppy contained. So exercise in the first few weeks can be kind of tough. Um, we made this mistake, and I felt terrible when we first got um, Aura. We you know, I started taking her out. I live in L.A. She met a bunch of dogs. She met a bunch of people. So I was pretty sick for the first week or so, just thinking, oh God, what have she caught something from another dog? Luckily, she did not. Um, and the reason why they give you four booster shots is because they really want to be sure with the immunization. So what happens is when a puppy weans, uh, they come off of their mother's milk and they have their antibodies for a little while. So sometimes when you get your first shot, um, it's covered or enveloped by the mother's antibodies and they don't get any immune response from it. So that's why you get a second time, a third time, and by the fourth time, all of these diseases have been covered with immunizations. So this is not just borzoi specific, um, and borzois do, you know, tend to be, they're very large lung, they can get kennel cough, that sort of thing. So when you talk to your vet, you know, talk about the appropriate vaccinations. We're still waiting um, I think next month, uh, Aura will be getting her final immunizations, which will be a rabies shot. And then in six months, she has some booster shots that we're going to do, especially if you live in a rural area. They have Lyme. Um, they have Lyme disease vaccinations available. They have a lot of stuff that you should consider depending on the area you live in. Rabies is a recommended shot here in Los Angeles, especially for if you want to go to doggy daycare or that sort of thing. Um, so it's a good thing to look into. So another thing we learned, you know, puppies and exercise is very important, but you can't overdo it. You know, puppies, especially younger ones, especially borzois who are growing freaking one inch a week. Um, you got to be careful with how rigorous the exercise is because they're, you know, their joints are changing, their feet are changing, everything is kind of loose and, and working together. So just be careful as you're you're going through and really monitor your dog. They're very vocal too. We'll, we'll go over that in a second. So, you know, we, we have Aura now, she's going to dog parks, she's, she's getting a little bit more rigorous exercise, but we're making sure that she's not overdoing it. You'll find, and especially at least with Aura, um, I've noticed that if she's over-exercised, she actually starts to get anxious. So you think she'd get tired, it's the opposite. She gets wired. So sometimes I find it's later in the day, I'm like, oh, I have to exercise the dog, she's going crazy. It's that I've exercised her too much, she's come along with us too much. So another thing is repetitive motion exercise for puppies is not that great. Not long hikes, not long walks, not you know long jogs or something. It's the same motion over and over and over again. That can be hard on their joints. So you want to do the free play, sort of bouncing around, that sort of thing. One thing I will say, um, and this has been with both Esper and Aura, and I remember as a kid, Borzoi puppies are extremely vocal. Um, they're very bodily sensitive, meaning they're, they have very strong feeling all over their skin. They're very aware, so any sort of pain they're going to let out the most terrible blood curdling scream you'll ever hear in your life. I mean, when I first got Esper, we were walking her in a park and <laughs> we had her on a long line and she was running and she slipped and I thought I broke my dog. She sat there screaming, screaming for a good five minutes. Like it was so overdramatic. It was, it was in a way, it was beautiful. Wish I 
Uh, no, I don't. It was terrible. It was absolutely terrible. Everybody's looking at us. So they thought, you know, our dog was dead. Within two seconds, she's up. She's running around. It was totally fine. Aura, um, same sort of thing. You know, we had a, she bumped into a, a bench at a dog park and started squeaking. And, you know, I have to tell her, don't worry. You know, she's just very vocal. So, um, you know, you got to be careful with the injuries, but you also have to be careful with them just being extremely, extremely dramatic creatures. Um, another thing I'll say and this is this is with borzoids. You know, you, you want to provide them the correct nutrition. You have to make sure you talk to your vet or your breeder of what you're going to feed them as a puppy because borzoids can grow too fast. This is a this is a big problem. If your borzoid is growing too fast, the bones and the ligaments aren't aligning. It's an, it can be an extremely debilitating and um, and painful situation. So make sure you're feeding the dog the correct diet. Um, and you should go over this, the correct supplements and diet, go over this with your veterinarian and breeder. They'll tell you when to feed and how to feed. Um, you know, certain puppy, um, certain puppy foods might be too nutritionally dense for a borzoi, actually causing them to, to grow too fast. So just, um, you know, as you're going through that, make sure, you know, watch the dog. There's some signs you can say if they're, you know, if they're growing too fast, sometimes their feet tend to splay. Um, one thing we did notice, and this was pretty terrifying. They grow so fast, one inch a week. You can see how long this dog is getting. This is crazy. So one of her feet was kind of growing in a little, little like, like cockeyed like this. We were like, it looked like the, it looked like the, the bone was broken. We didn't know, we didn't know what to do. So <laughs> we, we kind of panicked. We, we called our, we called our vet. We called, um, luckily she was going in for veterinarians, puppy appointment, um, but we called the breeders and, you know, it's actually kind of normal that they grow so fast that things don't grow at the same time. So periods of high stress, like when we first got her and we had to travel and bring her out here, probably caused her to grow at a different rate, different size, different feet. So that's something you should be looking out for. Um, be, be aware. They, the only thing they tell you to look for, she was not in pain. We, we were in pain for her, but she was not in pain. So um, you know, always look to see to your puppy for the for the for the signs. So that I just wanted to go over this stuff because there's some interesting medical things. You know, all also with sight hounds, make sure you're going to a veterinarian that is used to dealing with sight hounds. They have almost zero body fat. So if they're going in for surgery, if they're going in for treatment and they have to be put under anesthesia, they respond to that very differently. And I've heard some really bad stories about people losing their pets because the vet didn't know how to work with a sight hound. So make sure you, you find a vet that's used to that sort of thing. Um, luckily, our, our animal hospital out here in LA, they've done an incredible job with Esper and now they've done such a wonderful job with Aura that we're very excited about it. So yeah, please, um, I'm working on some more videos. Going to talk a little bit more about nutrition. You know, my my um, my opinions on nutrition have changed. You know, as I've done more research, and I've said that before, and, um, you know, we still cook a lot of food for Esper and Oro. It supplements their kibble, because I think a kibble is like having all the dog ingredients that's prepared for that reason. But also, you can't beat fresh fruits and vegetables, so I'm kind of combining the two. Um, I've noticed this great changes, you know, now we've changed up Esper's diet a little bit and she's, she's been loving it. So I'll go over that, uh, pretty soon. Hope you guys are liking the new, uh, weird origins of dog series. Going to be working on those as well, but as always, thank you guys. Um, and I'll see you soon. See ya.